And what's going on? Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com, and I'm back on Machine 2.0. Just want to show you guys how to map out your uh, VST instruments using your macro controls. To me, I just think it's a real dope workflow. You know, I use the Axiom 61, but you know, the Axiom has you know has a couple of knobs on it, you know, and a couple of sliders and stuff like that. But for me, I think it's dope where I can actually map out you know all the knobs and parameters on my my VST to the uh, machine. You know, plus you can use the left and right button and scroll through, you know, the page is really fast and easy. So I think it makes, you know, tweaking your parameters and, you know, things like that a lot easier. But that's just my opinion of my workflow. So I'm going to show you this. Now, Nexus is my pretty much go-to plugin when I am uh, laying down chords and stuff like that. So as you can see right here. Okay, so you're getting like the brass sound and the synth sound. So I have these two instruments actually linked together. I got more or less like a brassy sound here. More of like a kind of like a hit kind of stab sound right there. So in my last video, I have a stacking instruments uh, video. You might want to take a look at that because there's multiple ways you can do it. For me, I'm on the sound level on the MIDI tab. My destination, I'm selecting Nexus 2. Now, of course, there's a link icon here. You can you can do it that way too. I mean, see, I can go like this here, you know, and link one, link one, and they'll be in the same group and play. But for me, I like to have uh, all my MIDI notes on the uh, the piano roll. So I use I use this feature right here. It's just that's just my preference. You don't have to do it that way. Um, so for example, I'm gonna go on like this. If I jump over to this instrument here. The knob here, I can just turn this off like this here. You see that I have full and total control over that. Then I can blend that back in, you know, just to control my levels and stuff like that. Or another way I can do it, I can go here, select Nexus like this here. Now you notice that when I turn the volume down here, it still works. Why? Because it's getting the MIDI from this guy over here. That, that's one way. I mean, you don't have to do it like that, but that's just the way I got this guy um, set up right now. So right now we'll just leave it like this right here. Jump over, control the volume on that. All right, so to get the macro set up, let me jump over here to the macro page. And as you can see right here, I got some macro pages set up and I'm going to show you how this works. It's real easy. The way I mapped mine out was I basically, I wanted it to more or less go in an order that would make sense from the master filter section here to the delay here, the reverb here, all the way around to the, um, the amp modifier here to the filter modifier here. And also doing a volume output knob. Um, I think on this master filter page, I put it on there because it was just easier to get to in the beginning of the mappings. I didn't want to jump through the pages too much. So with the pages, you notice how I labeled them like this just to make it uh, a lot easier to display because this does show up inside your machine uh, controller. So when you see your mappings like this, don't let that confuse you. If you're trying to find your pages, you just click like this and it goes through your pages like this, see? So when I go like this, I go back to my master page here. When you're like this, when this is highlighted, don't think you're on your first page because you're not. Because you rub your mouse over it. See how the highlights like that? Those are your pages. But again, this is from the software, so it's a lot easier on your hardware controller. So let me put this in a way that it'd be easier to see. And for example, the first macro that I have signed here, your pages can be found down here again. So you see when I move this knob here, you see how that on light camp comes on over here? Off, on, off, on. Okay, then I go to the second uh, knob here, which is the cutoff. Then I jump over here, the resonance. Jump over here. This is more or less in the delay section, so I labeled it delay mix. See the mix there. And the mod. Feedback delay here. The low cut here. The high cut here. 
So it pretty much goes in an order like that. So when I go to the next page, okay, let's get this over here. You see over there where it says reverb mix. It's moving over there. Okay. Mod decay low cut. Basically, so I think you get the idea by now. Let me jump over here to this page. It's pretty much the whole entire plugin. It's just mapped out. There's an envelope up there. Cut off. And I have another page here for the amp section. You see right there. Pan. Spike. So you get the idea. Everything's mapped out. So it just makes you know controlling this plugin a lot easier when I'm on my uh, machine. All right. So how do we get that set up? This is the easy part. So again, I have a template for this and I'm going to uh, show you the template for that a little bit later on in the video. And I'm going to throw it on the free sound page on the site. By the way, we have a, a VIP membership is $9.99 with no monthly fees. And we give out free templates and uh, control editor templates and session files such as this one right here. So this template will be inside that uh, that free sound uh, package that I'm going to uh, put on the page in a few. So you guys might want to run by there and take a look at that. So let's jump over here and reset this guy right here. Let's show you how this works. Okay, again, I'm on the sound level macro page. You notice right here you have a select icon here. Now, again, your macros can be for not just VSTs. It could be for anything on machine, inputs, outputs, grooves, whatever the case may be. So as you can see right here under slots, here's Nexus. I'm going to select Nexus. Okay. Now, Native Instruments is smart because they made it in a way that makes sense because here's a page that's showing pages one through five. Okay. And when you press page one, you see that the attributes begin to come up from the plugin itself. So you can arrange this in any way that you want to arrange it. But for me, I did it like I wanted everything. Like, <laughs> like the template I just made, you guys are going to download it and check it out. I wanted everything the way it's supposed to be. Like this first one right here, I know where it says filter, you know, enabled. When I click that, that's that first knob. So it's more or less, you know, just following through. Here's a cutoff. Now you notice how the cutoff, it's duplicating what's already done here. You see that? So that's something you want to be mindful of. You don't want to duplicate any knobs because it's just a waste of space like that. You don't want to, you know, waste any space. So let's jump over. Let's do, for example, resonance, which is going to duplicate this one here again, which is something we don't want to do. But I'm just showing you how easy it is to just get in there and, you know, map out your, uh, your VSTs. See? So that's a great way to get in there and, you know, really get everything mapped out because a lot of times, you know, MIDI controllers or hardware controllers, you might not have enough knobs on it. So this is a great way to take advantage of the, uh, the pages on machine and use the, uh, the faders or the endless rotary knobs, I should say. All right. So I hope I'm not leaving anything out on that. I believe that's pretty simple and straight and to the point. And what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I will show you the template that you guys can download right now and get your feet wet in this. All right, fam, and I'm back. I just wanted to pull it up to show you exactly what will be inside of the uh, the template here. So let's go ahead and take a look. As you can see right here, it's going to give you the MST uh, logo. So it's going to give you a custom Nexus image that will appear inside your hardware controller, you know, and then that way, uh, I don't know, it just gives it a better visual feel when you're in your workflow and you're in your mix. And I thought that was kind of cool. So everything you need right here. And it's also a great template if you want to, you know, build off of it. So um, basically this one right here is going to be a zip folder. As you can see right here, it have everything that you need in it. You know, it have some imaging, some screenshots, basically screenshots like this right here. Let me uh, pull this up right quick. See right there, it's just going to basically show you what you need to do to get, you know, things set up and, uh, Let's pull this up again. Different screenshots, just you know, get you familiar with what's going on inside of the uh, the actual template. And this right here is just basically your image folder. Basically, what you're seeing right now, the MST logo to plug in. You know, it's only showing up like this because it's inside of a zip folder right now. So that's why I put it like this, just to give you a better visual, so you can see exactly what's in that zip folder. That's why I put it like this. This basically is what's going to be in that folder, and it's also going to have the group file which uh, reminds me 
as I'm uh, doing this now let me go ahead and show you this right quick also when you do load the template um, you can't load it as a project if you load it as a project uh, I believe it's gonna uh, it won't find your plugins or um, or something to that effect it's better because since it's a group file you have to load it from the group section here you right click here okay and you press open and when you press open you load it there and everything will just pop up and you'll be good to go so yeah man that's pretty much it you know short to the point that's how you get your macro control set up you know for this particular situation anyway using a VST instrument you know I thought that was kind of cool you know if you got your instruments you know you have certain layers because you know when you know like when you're over here and you're stacking sound you know you can use the, the link feature also um the way I did mine I used the uh, destination uh, link here I was linking them like this but it doesn't make a difference I mean here or the link feature you know it's a, it's up to you it's just, it's just preference this this is just the way that I do mine you know I, I use this little guy right here on the MIDI uh, output here but again that's up to you there was something else I wanted to tell you it's slipping my mind right now yeah man that's that's pretty much how it works you know in a nutshell you know and then that way you guys can get in there and you know you create your own little custom mappings for your instruments and I think that's cool you know and then you have you have better control when you're on your hardware controller because some people work from the uh, you know the MK1 MK2 or uh, whatever the case may be but it's not just for your studio controller I mean you know if you want to map it to your keyboard nine times out of ten I would imagine which is what most people are gonna do but for me I just find it easier when I'm on my keyboard when I'm playing you know I, j I just look to the left and then there's my studio controller and I go through the pages like so fast and make my adjustments while I'm playing on the keyboard Cause some keyboards they don't have like a lot of knobs you know and sometimes it can be a little more tedious <laughs> going through the pages um, on your actual hardware uh, controller as far as you know with the keyboard so you know to me it's just I don't know that that's just my workflow I, I find it easier to just scroll through the pages on the studio while I got my keyboard out and it just makes life just easier but you know that's just my my workflow you know you might have a controller where you like to sign your knobs and stuff like that on the keyboard itself <laughs> You know, I think it's kind of cool like that. Got your instruments stacked and everything's good to go. It's a nice little template, man. So, yeah, be sure to come by the site. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. We have a VIP membership. It's $9.99 with no monthly fees. Again, I repeat, no monthly fees. You come on the site. We give away free drum kits on a monthly basis. We give away free controller editor templates, free machine sessions, such as this one right here. I'm going to put this in the uh, on the free sound page now, and you can download it and enjoy. See you guys in the next one. Peace.